my name is Kaylee. Today we're going to discuss the lives of Native Americans before the Europeans colonized the Americas. In this lesson, we will focus on the Native Americans that lived in what we now call the lower 48 states of continental United States. Thousands of years before the Europeans sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and landed among the Americas in the 15th century, there were people already living in North America. There were many cultural groups among the Native Americans. Many of these tribes had their lives changed dramatically by the influence of European colonization. So we don't have a lot of knowledge on how they lived before European colonization. Let's start with the tribes of the Northeast, this dark green region on the map here. These are the tribes who first had contact with the pilgrims. Remember, Christopher Columbus never set foot in North America, so these people are completely different than the tribes first encountered by early explorers. Two tribes in this region are the Iroquois and the Algonquin. Northeastern tribes began to focus on agriculture, mainly growing corn, squash, and beans. The Iroquois people called these three sacred crops the Three Sisters. The Algonquins also began farming the three crops, but continued to hunt and fish. The Three Sisters were in high demand among Native Americans, and the Northeastern tribes would trade with the tribes of the Great Plains for fur, silver, copper, and pearls. Tribes in the Northeast tended to live in villages of a few hundred people. Many lived in long houses that were houses made of wood that could reach up to 100 feet long. They were meant to house nearly 20 families. As trading became more prevalent in the Northeastern tribes, so did conflict. Competition between the Iroquois and the Algonquin became so violent, the Iroquois tribe developed an allegiance between the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuca, and Seneca tribes called the Iroquois League, or the Great League of Peace. This league worked as a type of democracy, where the leaders of each tribe could make decisions on local problems, but the league would, would unite on issues of trade or war. Now let's look at the tribes in the southeast, like the Cherokee and the Seminole tribes. These tribes were in some of the most fertile land and practiced a wide range of agriculture, most notably corn farming, but also squash, beans, tobacco, and sunflowers. They supplemented their diets with nuts, seeds, and fruits. Despite their great farming success, the Southeast tribes continued to hunt. They used bow and arrows and created complex trapping systems for mussels, clams, and fish in the ocean off of Florida. They also built tools and weapons for hunting large animals. The tribes of the Southeast created larger societies and relied on trading hubs to move goods and food among themselves. Despite these large urban settings for trade, most people lived in small villages of under a thousand people and they shared a set of politics. The agricultural success of the Southeast tribes led to gaps in wealth. These were the first groups of Native Americans to organize their societies by chiefdoms. The chief was the wealthiest and most powerful person in the village, and the rest of society was ranked by social status and wealth. Now we'll look at this Midwestern region known as the Plains or Great Plains. This region was initially sparsely populated until groups like the Pawnee and the Cheyenne began to inhabit the region. Initially, the people in this region were sedentary, meaning they set up their homes, called earth lodges, and tended to stay there near their crops. Eventually, this region began to hunt by carving sharp points into stone called Clovis points and attaching them to the end of long sticks. The Plains tribes were able to hunt large animals like bison, buffalo, and mammoths. This hunting lifestyle led to a more nomadic people, 
meaning they would follow the grazing herds and build teepees that were easy to put up and take down as they moved. In the plains, the Native Americans separated into small groups called bands. Bands were made up of a few hundred people who would live, hunt, and travel together. These bands did not have a social hierarchy like the groups in the southeast. Instead, bands would often unite and settle to help each other hunt a large herd of bison. The people of the Great Plains had varying spiritual beliefs, but it's thought that most rituals and beliefs revolved around nature and the sun, and that the earth was the mother of all spirits. These groups regarded animal migration and life as sacred. The Native Americans in the Plains believed that some people were blessed to be leaders or medicine men, and they harvested plants for medicinal purposes and cures. Now we'll look at the Southwest. In this region, the group referred to the Pueblos or ancestral Pueblos dwelled. These people were credited with being the first farmers in North America. Corn was the first crop they grew, and they considered it not only a necessary food, but also a gift from the spirits. But the Southwest region is a very dry desert. In order to maintain their corn crop, the Pueblos developed an irrigation system which allowed them to water their crops. Since the Pueblo people were able to grow a surplus of food, they were sedentary people. They built stone and adobe or mud houses. These houses were like apartment buildings with multiple stories and rooms. The Pueblo people lived in large towns with thousands of people. Since the Pueblo people were so dependent on their agriculture, natural disasters like drought and flooding were catastrophic. These natural disasters led the Pueblo people to hold spiritual ceremonies where they would pray to their gods for good weather and a good harvest. Eventually, the Pueblo people were forced to leave the Southwest region due to natural disasters ruining their agricultural way of life. The Navajo, and Apache people migrated from the Northwest region, but instead of becoming an agricultural society, they remained hunters and gatherers and lived nomadic lifestyles. Since they moved around a lot, they built simpler homes out of mud and bark, and the drought and the flooding of the Southwest had less impact on the Navajo and Apache tribes. Lastly, we'll cover the Northwest region, which is roughly made up of the pink, blue, red, and orange regions on the map. The Native Americans in this region lived off of the natural resources of the land. Due to the big differences in land type and weather, the many tribes that lived here had very different lifestyles. Some of the tribes that lived in the Northwest were the Washoe, Mono, and Chinook. Most Native Americans in the West were fishers, hunters, and gatherers. Acorns were a large part of the diet of tribes in what is now California. Women would gather acorns and grind them into flour. Also, fishing for salmon sustained the people in this region due to the salmon-rich rivers. Men would use a harpoon to stab the fish swimming in the rivers. Many Western natives lived in easy-to-move huts made of sticks and leaves called wickiups. In areas where salmon and food were in abundance, the tribes would live in more permanent houses and lived among sedentary tribes. In areas with more food, the tribes were more wealthy and powerful. Some tribes, like the Chinook, were so powerful they enslaved members of other tribes to do hard labor, like preparing a killed bison for eating. The Native Americans in the West gave spiritual meaning to most animals, plants, and tasks. Even chores were considered to have spiritual meaning. Many groups prayed for good hunting, and some had rituals like throwing salmon bones into the river to replenish the salmon population and thank the river for its sacrifice. Now you have an idea of what America was like before any European contact was made. This is just a small example of the different people and cultures that existed and continue to exist in the United States for tens of thousands of years. Practice what you've learned by doing the online games and quizzes. Have fun and remember to always be clever. Hey, hey.